Good day, grade 10. So now that we've learned about electromagnetic radiation, we now need to learn about the electromagnetic spectrum in detail. So you will see an image of the electromagnetic spectrum, and from this image you will see that we start off with a very high frequency short wavelength, and as we go along the electromagnetic spectrum, we move all the way through to very long wavelengths. And if you look here, you'll see that gamma rays are your high frequency, then you've got X-rays, ultraviolet, visible, infrared, microwave, and radio. Grade 10, you need to know the order in which these come. In other words, you need to know that your gamma rays are your high frequency, your X-rays are less high frequency, and you need to know the uses of each of these. So we're going to be going through that today. So let's start with gamma rays, the most high energy of all the electromagnetic spectrum that we know about. These rays are emitted by naturally occurring radioactive materials and are a byproduct of nuclear reactions. So yeah, you can see that we've got a basically a star exploding and this is giving off a huge amount of radiative materials such as gamma rays and here you can see that we are using gamma rays in medicine to help us basically nuke a tumor. We are trying to get rid of the tumor by using gamma radiation. They have very high frequency and are therefore got very high energy. They have the greatest penetrating ability of all the electromagnetic radiation and therefore they have the greatest energy on are therefore also the most dangerous. So gamma rays are what, one of the radiation that's given off by your nuclear power plants and that is why we need to be very careful when we are near any nuclear power plants. But if it's very focused it can be used to kill tumors. Moving on to X-rays. X-rays are also pretty high energy. They are emitted with high-speed electrons and bombarded onto a metal plate. The electrons slow down the energy is transferred to high-energy electromagnetic radiation. The rays are dangerous and they have a high penetrating ability. These rays pass through the soft tissue but not the bones and that's how we can use them to make X-rays such as this and we photograph the bones. Ultraviolet radiation. These rays are emitted by very hot objects such as the sun and electric arc welders. Now, the ultraviolet rays from the sun can cause skin cancer and that's why we always say you have to use lots of sun protection and you need to be careful of the UVs, the UV radiation. The ozone layer of our atmosphere protects us from these rays by absorbing them before they reach us and that is why it was very important, I don't know if you've heard about it, but people complain about ozone depletion when they say our ozone layer is getting thinner and that's very important because the ozone layer is what protects us from these UV radiation. UV, UV rays can kill harmful bacteria, so they are used in hospitals and also in some air conditioning units. And sorry, if you look at this picture here, you will see that there's actually, this is placed under a UV light and there's actually secret markings in some of the money that shows up whether the money is real or not. So if, the, if under UV radiation these markings do not come up, then we know that this is fake money. Visible light, we know about visible light, we use it every day. What you need to know also about visible light is that when it is sent through a spectrum, I mean through a prism, it breaks up into your component colors which are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet and you need to know about them. Okay, you need to know what the range is. A nice easy way for you to remember it, let me just get a little pen here, the way that I was taught to remember it was Roy G. Biv. I was taught, whoops, there it is, Roy G. Biv, which is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. You can either use that or you can learn or make up any little anagram that helps you remember the order of the colors of the rainbow. Next we get infrared radiation. Now infrared radiation comes from basically all objects that give off heat. The particles of all objects vibrate and as a result they emit radiation in the infrared re region of the spectrum. 
So even though we can't see it with a visible eye, it can be seen through some photographic film and we can take infrared pictures of objects in the absence of light. So what it's doing here is here we've got infrared and this is obviously taken at night because we know this because yeah we can see this deer and infrared radiation only shows up hot objects. So if you look over here as well this is a hairdryer and you can see that yeah it's very hot and it's giving off lots of hot air. Infrared binoculars allow us to view objects like animals at night. Also, if you've watched any action movies where they use night goggles to see things, those night goggles are infrared binoculars or goggles. Other uses of infrared radiation, we use it in our remote controls to switch on our TV or change the channel, the little light in the front, the little LED light, just shows us the signal's been sent. It's got nothing to do with the actual transfer of the information. We are actually using infrared radiation. Today, and more, instead of sticking a little mercury thermometer into our mouths, what they can do is they can have a little thing that sticks into our ear and it measures the infrared radiation given off. Also, infrared radiation is used in physiotherapy to heal muscles. So there's a couple of the uses of infrared radiation. Microwaves. As you can see from here, microwaves are used in mobile phones, they're used for communication, and they're obviously used in microwave ovens. The wavelength of these waves is only a few centimeters. So like I said, they're used for satellite communication, for telephone, and for television. They're used to cook food in the microwave. But how does that work? What happens is the water molecules in your food actually absorb the energy from the microwaves, causes the water molecules to vibrate. And this, because it's vibrating, it gives off heat, and this heats up and cooks the food. So the food is actually cooked from the inside out. Radio waves. Now please understand that this is not sound. Radio waves are just really long transverse waves and they are easily diffracted or bent around objects because they've got such long wavelengths. A medium radio wave is easily transmitted. So for example radio 702 transmits on a frequency of 702 kilohertz which is a wavelength of 427 meters. Now let's think about it. The microwave had a wavelength of a couple of centimeters. This radio wave has a wavelength of 427 meters. So it's a substantially longer wavelength. Shortwave radios are reflected by the ionosphere, resulting in the erratic reception for shortwave radio. So we don't really use shortwave radio when we listen to the radio or anything like that. Very high frequency radio waves are used for FM or frequency modulated radio transmission. And that's what we usually listen to when we listen to KFM or 5FM or whatever we listen to. Now, a very high frequency and ultra high frequencies, that's VHF and UHF, waves are used for television. If you've ever let your TV, if you've ever seen a TV, um, search for its own channels and you will see that it'll go through all the VHF channels and then all the UHF channels. And that's because different TV stations broadcast on different frequencies and that actually depends on whether they're a national TV station or a local TV station. So if you look here, this is a very nice image, you can see that very high frequency and ultra high frequency waves are not easily diffracted and so cast shadows behind the buildings and this is why so many transmitting aerials are needed for the TV tr transmission. So if you look, this is ultra high, ultra high is the green, so do you see it doesn't quite get over that little bump, okay, the little mountain, whereas your high frequency does, your high frequencies do, your very high frequencies can get up to your airplane but and they can get over the little bump but they can't get over the big bump. So the only way they can do that is if they put little satellite dishes. So the reason that we've got houses with satellite dishes on them is so that we can get all these transmissions. And that grade tens is the electromagnetic spectrum. Please make sure that you've learned the order that they come in from very high frequency to very low frequency as well as their characteristics and their uses. It is incredibly important. Thank you. I hope you have a wonderful day.